I think the way I, well, first of all, what you had given to me in the SIS system even, for the first two units especially, I feel like if I would have just opened the textbook and looked, I would have been like, should I just do one of the texts? Do I just read it and take the test? Do I just do what they told me to, you know what I mean? So going through the first two units um, with your guidance was like helpful on, oh, this page they should look at, or this activity they should do, or stuff like that was just helpful as me like, okay, I could be going in this direction. And then learning that, and then learning my kids, I realized that I really needed to look at the PBA first and like know that that's the end goal for them to accomplish. And so the way, even with your enduring understanding, the essential questions all listed out like that, having those, I have them on my board the entire unit. And we look at them every single day almost. Like this is like everything we read in this t unit should answer these questions or we could answer these questions. So we're just always looking at the end and like what we're doing today has a purpose for the end. So they can kind of like synthesize as they're going, like put things together. Like this could be for my essay I'm about to write. I'm going to save it in this folder instead of throwing it away. You know what I mean? So just trying to prepare them for the PBA, whether it's writing an essay, the presentations, the narrative, anything like that, so that they see like this is something I need and I'm going to use and that they're like tracking with me almost. So that they see my planning. Like they are like, Oh, because I'll always be like, hey, next week we're doing this. And like, this is why we're doing it, because we need to prepare for this. I think I'm honestly still figuring it out. We did, um, and we've done like intermittent star reader tests just to get like a raw number of where they are grade level. Um, with my other ninth grade class that wasn't in the Socratic seminar, they are, the average uh, reading level is like fifth grade. And so it's very difficult, especially when there's like science essays in there that they're reading and they're like, we don't even get normal vocab and I'm, here's this weird science word. So it's been difficult. What I found is that I use our IEP, she's with them all day. And so she's in my classroom for two periods and she either pulls out or she's sitting with kids or she'll remind me like, they don't understand this. <laughs> like you need to go back and like explicitly say, or like when you came in one time and you were like, why aren't you writing on the board what you're saying out loud? Or like, you just define this, why don't you write it on the board? Because they're hearing you, but until you put it down, they're like, it's not important almost. So I've been trying to like do a lot of that. Like instead of just saying, this word means this, do you get it? And they go, and then I'm like, no, they, no, they don't. So like even with like, um, the enduring understanding for this unit it had like adversity in there and I would say like adversity is this and they go and then I'm like okay write it down like the definition and then um, I'd be like what are some synonyms and then even after hearing the definition they're like I don't know so then we just wrote synonyms on the board next to adversity and so now they know what adversity means because when I say adversity I just sub the words in every single time so I think the vocab has been difficult I think that's where they struggle the most and so trying to figure out a better way of teaching it at the same time as we're reading a story has been difficult because I need them to understand the text and when there's so many words they don't understand, it's like, okay, what's the most important part? What can they get? You know what I mean? Like, what can we just keep going? And when do I need to stop? When it's like words like adversity, which is like the topic of the unit, I need to break that down. And every time they use in the text, like, oh, we know that word. Or like survival, is it just life and death or is it, so I think looking at what are the big concepts in this unit and then just like driving home on it. Like this is where we need to stick on. Like if it's just adversity, then every word that's like adversity or survival, they better get that. Otherwise they can't do the Socratic seminar. You know what I mean? And we have Megan Collins in here. Like I can go to her and ask her strategies too. And I don't know what, I feel like I would have to talk with someone like specifically and like this is this, even behavior stuff like, or this is the vocab they're struggling with. How do I, cause I feel like in school I wasn't, I was taught like this is how you teach vocabulary, but like what about a student that that doesn't work for? Um, first of all, just like I have a good report with them. Like they know that I care about them. I think they care about me. And so they want to uh, do, I don't know if like, pleases me as the right word because I don't feel like it's like that type of thing like I better do this so she does this but I think when we just have a relationship like I 
I think having a relationship first is like, oh, we're on the same team. Like, we're working towards the same goal together. I feel like that's really important. Um, and I do have behavior issues. Like, I think I'm young and I'm um, very small. And so I feel like I'm easily and very, pregnant. And very <laughs> large and hard to move. So, like, I think there are points where they think, like, I can use my posture to my advantage or whatever. But I think relationship first is very important, What and I think that they know that. And I also think, like, having my expectations, like, and I had to, like, I, these guidelines for the Socratic Seminar, we've gone over so many times. But, like, if I don't go over them so many times, how can I tell them, like, stop raising your hand? Or, like, why are you having a sign conversation? Because they've hurt so many times, so they're like, oh, I can't do that. You know what I mean? Um, as far as preparing for this, like we practiced um, with other nonfiction articles. So they've seen it. And so the same thing with like expectations. Like I didn't just throw them into the circle and like go over this before we started. Like they've seen it four times. We watched a video of one. Um, they observe each other doing it and make comments. And so I think just like setting them up well, avoid some of the even distractions or opportunities for misbehavior. I, I think it's, Socrates created or had this form of thinking that like having the right answer doesn't make you smart. Like being able to talk about and discuss ideas makes you knowledgeable. Like if my kids learn how to discuss why they're thinking what they're thinking and where they got it from, like that matters to me more than you got a 25 out of 30 in multiple choice test. You know what I mean? Um, and I, that's why I'm an English teacher. Like they should be able to know, like cognitively, like think about what they're thinking about. Like why are they thinking that way? And like the Socratic seminar is the best place for that because it's not an argument, it's not a debate. And so they learn how to um, discuss with each other without getting angry or defensive or thinking that there's only two sides to any sort of argument. And like, that's what our whole world is saying right now. Like, you're either right or you're wrong. And like this whole time, I'm like, there is sometimes not just a right and a wrong, like lines are blurred. Like we should talk about that. Like, why is that true? And like, even like one of the students, Elisa, she wasn't very, she's not very confident in the classroom. She doesn't, she doesn't have a lot of confidence in general. And she's, people just view her as like, she just talks out, yada, yada, yada. And the first time we practiced Socr Socratic seminar, she was such a good question asker. I was like, literally, I was just like, oh my, who is she? Like, she was thinking so deeply about everything. And most of the students were just like, how do we do this and stuff? And she was just like, why do you think that? Well, why do you think that's true? Well, what about this? And she was just so engaged. And afterwards, I got to say like, Alisa, you did so well. And she's like, I did. And so like, she is now like, her mind has changed like maybe this is what learning is like me just asking questions and so it like switched her engagement level in the classroom event and that was a couple weeks ago and she's been different just being able to and i feel like the socratic seminar set her up to do that like asking questions is good like telling people why you think the way you think is good like you should be able to do that and i'm in that balance too like just because i'm trying to do this doesn't mean i've haven't thought about the test. Like I feel like they've been testing for three weeks straight and it's overwhelming for me and for them. And they get that they're like being pulled in all these places. But I think like absolutely, and it's not just like for the test even. Like I'm thinking long term when they leave my classroom, they're in college and the real world, like all they're going to be asked and confronted with is like, why do people do the things that they're doing? And how do I talk with people without everything being an argument? And like, this is like a skill that I feel like, I mean, if I don't start in ninth grade, I mean, I'm only gonna have, I have them for 10th grade as well, but like, if I don't start like, this is how you talk, like in a scholarly way with people where you're intelligent and you care about their thoughts and your thoughts being heard, then we need to establish that early so that when you get into, like that's a skill for life that they need, but also for the test, like, it builds that confidence, like I said, and also once they know why they think what they think about any topic, whether it's a standard or not, they can, I don't know how to describe it. It's the confidence thing, but it's also like 
it's more than just a multiple choice test at that point in time. I can read this question and then I can eliminate answers, but also like, why would someone phrase it this way? How can I, what would be a logical thing? They're just, they're deeper thinkers instead of like a, I don't, I guess I'm just guessing. You know what I mean? I think it is like beginning of the unit. I know when we started a new unit in a couple of weeks and I'm like, I think it's doing a unit currently, knowing there's a new one coming up, trying to prepare for it, and like, what readings do I need for this PBA? And like, trying to figure that all out. And like, how long do I spend on each one? Uh, what is my focus? Like I said, I picked out like adversity in this one. So like, trying to do all of that as I'm teaching, and I feel like being a first year teacher, that is my biggest struggle, which I don't know if others would agree, but like, trying to do it as I'm doing it with something else and like making every unit count and significant. I'm excited for next year because I'm like, wow, I've been through these units. I know what to expect. So now I can correct what I messed up the first time, but also like really refine these things. Like I taught them. I know it's important this time. Now I can really just push on, like start that way instead of like fumbling through a little bit. No, now I got it and start. But I think like, having the guidance and like these readings are good like that's helpful for me like when you're like these are good readings for this unit and i'm like great now i don't have to go through all the closed reader ones all of the fyi website all of the uh text in this unit that the book gives me this is a good base that i can at least look at first and see like okay this is where i'm going to start with instead of picking from there's so many things I think I'll do it more so even next year because now I know where the gaps are and where I can fill in with stuff. Um, I would say the last couple months I've used the FY, FYI, is that what it is? Website more with the nonfiction articles because it has them with a the unit and especially like for this unit where I had them practice, I just used the articles that were in the unit for FYI because they're the same topic but still they're short little articles they can read in class and then do a Socratic seminar. So it was like, I didn't have to like sit there and Google like adversity articles, read through a bunch. It was just there. So I've used that more often. I use the closed readers, which of course is good with those ninth graders because they are lower lexile. So that's about it for those. I feel like my biggest area for growth is in my unit planning. Not that I don't like what I've done this year, but now that I've been through them, I feel like I can do so much more with them. I don't know if that's, cause it's not like, wow, all these units went really poorly. They didn't, but I feel like I know the text now. I know the PBAs now, and I know all the little side things that are offered, all the closed readers and all stuff like that. Like, I feel like I can really help them instead of like figuring it out with them, if that makes sense. Because I feel like I was kind of like, which sounds like I was floundering, which felt like it at times, I guess, but like, I was like kind of like figuring it out with them. And I feel like next year I can refine it and like include even more fun stuff. Like, oh, I get like these texts that I have to use. Now I can incorporate like doing fun things with them or like doing those added activities that would bring their engagement more. So, I don't think, I feel like, and I say that just because like this year for me, um, there are a couple students, like just a few, that I'm like, I feel like there could be, I don't know what it is. It's like one of those things where like, it's one of those students where you're like, I'm doing this, I have the expectations, I follow through with consequences, nothing. So I don't think there's an end all be all for any of them. Even though I expect it, or my expectation is like, I've tried, now you need to meet me halfway. It's just like, that's not always so gonna happen. I would say like my first like gut instinct is to like say my coworkers, like we're, uh, the high school teachers just have like a really good bond with each other. So the community The community the is like, and I'm just a community person in general, so that's probably why. Um, but just, wow, like in a planning period, this just happened, is it just me? And they're like, no, it's not just you. Same issues are happening with this student. We're going to, I mean, it's going to, might be the same tomorrow. It might be the same for the rest of the year, but we're going through it together type of deal. And so just like being able to debrief with people or like just talk about instead of sitting at my desk thinking like, 
wow, I'm a really crappy teacher because I can't get this kid to do X, Y, Z or because they so missed it. Takes- it.